Hey guys, this video is about rate laws. So for, their, for our generic um, chemical equation, AA plus BB goes to CC plus DD. Remember the lowercase letters stand for the coefficients in the balanced equation, and the capital letters stand for the formulas of the, um, the species, the reactants, and the products. Um, so in general, okay, the rate law has this form down here in white. The rate for this reaction is going to be equal to um, K, some constant, times the concentration of one reactant raised to some power. Notice it's not the coefficient, it's some other power. Um, it could be the same, we don't know. Times the concentration of the second um, reactant raised to some other power. So N and M here um, are called, N is called the order of the reaction with respect to A. M is called the order of the reaction with respect to B. And the sum of the two, n plus m, is called the overall order of the reaction. Now, n and m are integers, and they must be determined by experiment. k is called the rate constant, and that also has to be determined by experiment. So this is the form of the rate law for a chemical reaction. Now, for the most part, chemical reactions are reversible, to, at least to some extent. Um, for example, in the decomposition of phosphine to form phosphorus and hydrogen, um, once we, we start out, if we start out with just phosphine we start, and we make some phosphorus and hydrogen, then some, at least a few of these molecules of phosphorus and hydrogen will recombine and reform phosphine. Now, <clears throat> when we just start out with only phosphine in the reaction vessel, the rate of that reaction depends only upon how much phosphine, well, doesn't depend upon how much phosphorus and hydrogen there is because there is none. It just depends upon the concentration of phosphine, pH 3. But once we start making phosphorus and hydrogen and they start reforming phosphine, the kinetics become much more complicated. So to avoid this complication, we use something called the method, the method of initial rates. And that is, we measure the rates. We do our kinetics at the very beginning of this reaction when there's only reactant in there, in that vessel. And so for this reaction here, for example, the rate would be equal to the rate constant times the concentration of phosphine raised to N, whatever that is, the order of the reaction with respect to phosphine, which by the way would also be the overall order for this reaction. So let's look at an example. So for the um, reaction of iodide and persulfate to form iodide and sulfate, um, we're given this data. So each row in this table, guys, represents one trial. So what, what it's saying is, in the first trial here, the first row, um, we, we cause the initial concentration of iodide to be 0 0.080 molar, and the initial concentration of uh, persulfate to be 0 0.040 molar. And we measure the, the rate of reaction uh, in the beginning, initially, and we find, find that it's this number right here, 12.5 times 10 to the minus 6 moles per liter second. And then in the second trial, we change the concentration of the iodide, keep the concentration of persulfate the same. So that's important. When we do this, we want to only change one constant, the concentration of one reactant at a time. And you'll see why in just a minute. So what we want to do, guys, is we want to figure out what the rate law is. That, what that means is we need to find out what the, um, what the order of the reaction is with respect to iodide, persulfate, um, and then the rate constant. We want to also find rate, average rate constant. So, why don't you guys give this a shot, see if you can figure out how to do it, um, and when you finish, come on back. Welcome back, guys. So, what we're going to do, okay, first write down the form of the rate law. It's equal to the rate constant times the concentration of one reactant to the N, other reactant to the M. Now, it doesn't matter what order. I could have put the persulfate here to the nth and the iodide here to the nth. doesn't matter. We'll figure it out. So what we do is because the rate in the first trial, okay, so these subscripts here represent each trial, first trial, second trial, um, third, fourth, and fifth, right? So the ratio of the rate of the first trial, which is equal to the rate constant, the concentration of iodide in the first trial to the nth, concentration of persulfate in the first trial to the nth over the rate of the second trial, which is the same thing only for the um, second trial. What, we have, what happens, guys, is when we plug our numbers that we have in here for the initial concentrations of iodide and 
for sulfate because we set up our experiment so that only the initial concentration of, in this case, iodide changed where the initial concentration of persulfate did not. You see what happens is, because it's the same rate constant, the Ks cancel, they go away. And because the concentration, the initial concentration of the persulfate is the same, 0 0.040 molar, um, 0 0.040 to the nth over 0 0.040 to the nth is equal to 0 0.040 over 0 0.040 to the nth, which is 1 to the nth, which is just 1. And so it goes away too. And so what we have is 0 0.080 over 0 0.040 to the nth, which is 2 to the nth. So the ratio of the rates of the first two trials is equal to 2.0 to n, which is what we're trying to find. Then what we do is we do the same ratio, but for the rates that we measure. You see, we measure these initial rates here experimentally. Um, you'll see in the experiment how you, how you do that. But when we take the ratio of these rates, okay, that ends up being equal to 2.00. Because both of these are equal to the ratio of the rate of the first trial to the ratio to the rate of the second trial, they're equal to each other. So that means that 2.00 equals 2.0 to the nth, or n is equal to the one, equal to one. We have the order of the reaction with respect to iodide. We have our n. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing and to find m. And what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to pick a trial where the iodide concentration stays the same, but the per sulfate ion um, concentration changes, so one and three. So let's do that. So same idea, ratio of the first trial to the third trial is equal to the K. Um, the initial concentration of iodide in both cases is 0 0.080. Um, it's to the first power because we found N, but it cancels anyway. K's cancel. We end up getting 2.0 to the N. Taking the ratio of the rates, we get 2.00. So 2.00 equals 2.0 to the M. In this case, M is equal to one also. That's not always the case. But, right, now that we know the um, N and the M, we know the form of the rate law. K, concentration of iodine to the first power, concentration of persulfate to the first power. It's, uh, so it's first order in both iodine and persulfate, and the overall order is two. One plus one is two. Now let's find K the rate constant. So what we do is now that we know the N and the M, we can just take each of these trials, plug in the concentrations, the initial concentrations. Um, so the rate, okay, the rate law equals K, concentration of iodide, concentration of persulfate. So we solve this, rearrange and solve for the rate constant, it's equal to rate over the concentration of iodide, concentration of persulfate. Plugging in the rate, which we have, plugging in the concentrations, we can find the rate constant. So we do that for the first trial. You guys should check my, my numbers here, but I got 3.9 times 10 to the minus three, and the units end up being liters per mole times seconds, um, right? Because in this case, molarity cancels. Um, here we get molarity, which is moles per liter, so liters is on top, moles is on bottom, seconds on the bottom. And same thing for the second, third, fourth trials. So make sure you know where I got all these numbers from, guys. Um, trial five ends up being a little different. This comes from you know either experimental error or rounding. Um, it's when you do this in real life, you don't usually get numbers this good. Usually there's going to be some discrepancies, which is why we usually always take the average to get the, the rate constant. Anyway, the average rate constant is 3.9 times 10 to the minus three liters per mole second. Now we know the rate constant. We know the rate law. We know the n, m, and k. All right, so now here, here's one for you guys to do. So we're given the following data, okay, in this yellow table right here. So these are initial rates, um, initial rates and initial concentrations for these two reactants. Um, so we want to find, um, find the rate law, which means N, M, and K, the value of K. Um, and also, okay, we want to figure out what the initial rate would be for a trial when the initial concentrations are equal to these numbers. So why don't you guys work this out, come on back when you get an answer. Welcome back, guys. So, <clears throat> the form of the rate law is K, um, chlorine dioxide to the nth, hydroxide to the nth. Um, I picked the um, rate of second trial over the first trial um, because um, the concentration of chlorine dioxide stayed the same, hydroxide changed. I, you know, that's a personal preference. I like to put the bigger number on top. It doesn't matter. You get the same answer if you did it one over two. Um, but anyway, 
ratio of the rates is equal to 2.0 to the mth. Um, when I put the rates in, 0.388 over 0.194 is equal to 2.00, so we get m is equal to 1. They're not always 1, guys. You'll see in a second. And then to get n, I use trials 3 and 1 because chlorine dioxide changed. Hydroxide did not. Plugging those in, I get the ratio of the rates is equal to 2.0 to the nth. Ratio of the rates here, 0.776 over 0.194 is equal to 4. 4.00 equals 2.0 to the nth. That means n is equal to 2. Remember, these, these have to be integers, so we know they're integers. We write them as integers. Now that we know n and m, we know the form of the rate law. Now we just have to find the rate constant. So we're going to do it the same way. Um, now that we know the rate law, we rearrange this, solve for, um, solve for k. Let me get that. Get that. Um, and taking trial 1, I plug in the rate, which is 0.194 moles per liter per second, um, over the initial concentrations. In this case, chlorine dioxide is squared and hydroxide is the first power. And you get 229.9, and the units end up being liter squared per mole squared times second. Make sure you guys see why these units come out to be like they are. And for trial two, I get the same thing. Trial three, the same. And so our average rate constant is ends up being to three sig figs, 230 liter squared per mole squared times seconds. All right, now the last part of that problem asks for the rate, the initial rate, when the initial concentration of chlorine dioxide is 0.459 molar, the initial concentration of hydroxide is 0.727 molar. You see guys, what's cool now is that now that we know the rate constant and the order of the reaction with respect to each of the species, we can just plug into the rate wall with any initial concentrations and calculate the initial rates. So all we do is we take the rate is equal to the rate constant K times the initial concentration of chlorine dioxide squared times the initial concentration of hydroxide to the first power, and we get 35.2 moles per liter per second or more per second. And that's all there is to it, guys.